Hello, welcome to online Turkey school lesson number 18. Uh, in this lesson we're going to continue with what we started doing in the previous lesson in the 17th video in which we learned in which we started learning uh, the adjective clauses in Turkish, which is a pretty vast subject so I decided to cover them in um, split lessons so that you can better understand how it functions. So anyway, in this lesson we're going to continue with that. But but before that, I I'm going to give you the answers of the uh, exercises that I gave you at the end of the previous lesson and those were uh, these yeah so the, pre the first uh, sentence was the kid that is reading a book is my brother and so if we do that I'm gonna use uh, maybe red yeah this is readable I guess um, so the kid that is reading a book is my brother now this that is reading a book is going to be my sub close. So the first, the main sentence is the kid. The kid is my brother. So in that that's going to be çocuk, the kid is my brother. Benim kardeşim. And you don't translate this is because this is the third person, so you don't do anything. Now before the çocuk, because this is about the kid. Which kid? That is reading a book. So I'm going to use this as an adjective. So this is the verb, this is the object, and in Turkish it's SOV, so it's object first, verb later. So it's a book is bir kitap, and read is okumak. And now I'm gonna delete this and add an or an, and for oku it's an. But it's, you know, we have two vowels here, so I'm gonna add an additional y here. So bir kitap okuyan çocuk, benim kardeşim. This was the um, sentence. If you want my brother, so it's like erkek kardeşim if you want, because kardeş is unisex, it can be sister too, and erkek is male, so it's my male brother, or male sibling brother, so it's brother. But it's unnecessary. So, and the second sentence, it's going to be, <coughs> the building that is standing there isn't my workplace. So, this that is standing there, it's the subclose. So the main sentence is the building isn't my workplace. So building is bina and workplace is um, so it's first my so binim. Workplace is ishir and uh, it's mine so ishirim. But it's not so deal or deal. We pronounce it usually deal like this. Okay, deal. Now which building? The one that is standing there. So stand is the verb and there is the predicate the adverb whatever so it's gonna come before the verb so it's gonna be orda uh, and stand is durmak durmak so durmak also means to stop by the way in different contexts so durmak dur an or an for durmak it's gonna be an orda duran bina benim işyerim değil uh, pay attention, bina, it's pronounced with a long A, as if it was like this, okay? It's not bina, but bina, bina, okay, long A. And the A here, it's not pronounced, so orda. Orda duran bina, benim işyerim değil. So that was the second one. And the third one, the woman who isn't rich is a teacher. Now, the main sentence is, the woman is a teacher. And the, which woman? The one that is not rich. So this is the adjective. Um, so... This is the main sentence, so the verb to be here, it's not important, we're not going to translate that. But the verb to be in here, M is R, in the subclose, in the adjective clause, that is important, we're going to translate it. And uh, we'll see in a minute. So the woman is a teacher, it's um, it's a uh, kadın. Oh, sorry. Let me go there, okay. Kadın. Bir uh, maybe. Yes, kadın bir öğretmen. Maybe I would put a comma here. Yeah, it's better. Kadın bir öğretmen. Yeah. And um, so the who isn't rich? Rich is zengin. And all isn't is the verb to be, right? So olmak. But uh, it's not to be. It's negative. So olmamak. Not to be. Now I'm going to add an or an, and for this it's going to be an, but 
two vowels, so I'm gonna use a Y here. Zengin olmayan kadın bir öğretmen. Okay. Um, we put this comma here because otherwise it's gonna, it could be like an adjective, a female teacher. Kadın bir öğretmen. Okay, so that's a little, little ambiguous without a comma. It's better this way. Okay, so zengin olmayan kadın, zengin olmayan kadın, zengin olmayan kadın bir öğretmen. The woman that is not rich, uh, so yeah, that is not rich, is a teacher. Zengin olmayan kadın bir öğretmen. So yeah, these were the um, exercises that I asked you to do. I hope you got them right. But if you didn't get them right, that's fine. This is too easy a topic. But uh, we covered these in the previous lesson, so um, I suggest you go and listen to it again or watch it again. I know it's a 40-minute video, it's a pretty long video, but it can help you better remember uh, what you had learned. Uh, and in this lesson, we're going to continue with that. So yeah, so let's get gets, let's get to our new topic. Now, in this topic, in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about. Let me use the white here again. Yeah. I'm going to talk about um, a, um, a sentences in which the subclose, the adjective, adjective close in English, has the verb to have or has. Okay, so I'm going to use got on all again. Okay, for example, first of all, how do we translate the verb to have in Turkish? For example. Mm. Let's take Mark has a car. How do we translate such a sentence? In Turkish, we don't have the verb to have. So we, what we say, uh, what we do is we use the ver uh, the word var. I'm not sure what this is. I guess it's an adverb or something, which means exists. Okay, or there is, there are. We use it there as well. There is, there are. Okay. So. And how we use this? We say Mark un Marks, right? The genitive. And Araba se. So it's Mark's car. Mark and Araba se, Mark's car. And then you add var. So you say Mark's car exists. That's how we say Mark has a car in Turkish. Okay? Now, um, but we use var in, uh, in other places as well. For example, Mm, there is a car here. So how we do this? Here is burda, and a car is bir araba, and there is is just var. At the end, you just add var. By the way, if it's negative, you don't use var, but you say yok, right? Burda bir araba yok. There is no car here, or marken arabas yok. Mark has no car. Mark doesn't have a car. Okay. Do you remember this? This was, I guess, the sixth video, maybe, or five, fifth. Uh, I don't remember. Anyways, so do you remember this? I ho I hope you do. So this varyok. Now let's translate a sentence where there is the verb to have or there is there are. For example, let's start with um, to have. Actually, let's only do to have in this video. For example, the student who has a dog is not coming with us. Or he's not coming, okay? The student who has a dog is not coming. Now, first of all, what are the two sentences? The two sentences are the student is not coming and the student has a dog okay or vice versa the student has a dog and the student is not coming and the student who has a dog is not coming is the fusion of these two sentences so let's translate these first to turkish um the student is öğrenci and come is gelmek so it's gelmiyor right the student is not coming öğrenci gelmiyor and the student has a dog, it's öğrenci, nim, students, apostrophe, and s, bir köpeği var. Okay, remember this is köpek, plus the third person possessive, e, but this becomes soft g then, 
Okay, öğrencinin bir köpeği var. The student has a dog. Now, when we merge these sentences, here's what happens. So, this is the subclose, right? Who has a dog. Now, I'm gonna uh, ignore it for a second. And the main sentence is, the student is not coming, which is here. Right? Öğrenci gelmiyor. Now this subclause, this adjective clause is going to come before it because in Turkish adjectives come before the noun. So I'm going to do this. Okay, we're going to add it here. Orange get me. Now what we do is this. Obviously we're not going to repeat this one. Okay, we're not going to repeat this one because that's the main idea of fusion. I mean, if you're going to repeat all the time, the student is not coming, the student has a dog, then what's the point? So you have to omit this one. Um, so that you have orange only once in the sentence, just like here. Although here you have the student is not coming, the student has a dog, you have two students. I mean, this one student, but it's repeated twice. In this main sentence, and the original sentence, you only repeat it once, although you say the same thing. So that's the main idea. So we're not going to repeat this one. Okay? So just omit this one. You don't you don't say this. You start with here, bir köpeği var. Okay. So you don't use var anymore. Okay? You use the verb to be again, olmak. So, you use the verb. Var becomes olmak, and you treat it like a verb now, and it's like a normal noun anymore, a, a normal adjective close thing. You omit the mak, and you add on. Okay, all on. So it's. I'm not gonna say simple, but that's the rule. Whenever you have var, whenever you want to have an adjective adjective clause in which you have the verb to to have or var in Turkish you don't use var but you use olmak so you say okay bir köpeği not var but olmak and so olan I'm gonna say it here bir köpeği olan öğrenci gelmiyor okay I just added this remaining of the sentence here so one his dog exists the student isn't coming <laughs> or the student who has uh, a dog isn't coming okay that's how we say the sentence now you might have the question in your mind how would you if ever say the student who is a dog is not coming because olmak is the verb to be right so that is also is MSR. We used it for MSR. So how, how do we differentiate these? Well, that's simple. If, okay, um, can I maybe do this in two? Yeah. I'm gonna use the other part of the sentence, of the, um, okay. So, let's say the student who is a dog who is not human, is not coming. So this is the student is not coming, which is uh, again. And the student is a dog. Right? So that's the sentence. Now, the same thing. You say, you start with So I'm going to say this. And this is going to come before it because it's our adjective. Which student? The one who is a dog. So you just don't repeat this one and you say bir köpek. Bir köpek. And we use the verb to be. Olmak. Olan. Öğrenci gelmiyor. Now please pay attention to this. Okay, I'm going to underline it. Bir köpeği olan. So the only difference we do is this. Here, if it's the verb to have. We use it in the possessive form, third person, and here it's just nominative. So that's the only difference. But it's important. Okay? Now, maybe for this sentence, probably we, you would never talk about a student who is a dog. But, I mean, okay? You can you can sometimes. I can't think of an example right now. Oh, yeah, I can. For example, the man who has a teacher is not coming and then the man who is a teacher is not coming actually let's work on those sentences so first of all I'm gonna say um, let's delete this one uh, yeah okay 
I'm gonna say uh, the man who has a teacher um, is eating or is um, drinking beer and then I'm gonna say here the man who has uh, who is a teacher now who is a teacher is drinking beer now here the man is drinking beer is Adam um, first of all let's make this and let's write the sentences separately the man is drinking beer this is our main sentence and this is gonna be Adam Bira Ichio um, oh, sorry let me delete this one okay Adam Bira Ichio and then the second sentence is the man has a teacher which in Turkish we just did Adam un bir öğretmeni var. Okay. Now I'm gonna write it. Uh, sorry, here as well. The man who is a teacher drinking is drinking beer. Okay. So the main sentence is the same. The man is drinking beer, and uh, the man. Let me correct this one. Who? Okay. So and the sub close is the man is a teacher this, this time himself so Adam Birolikman now um, when we merge them we, we, we don't start with this one but we start with the adjective we don't repeat this so Bir Öğretmeni right Bir Öğretmeni not var but Olmak Olan and then we continue here Adam Bira Ichiyor okay so you have the here possessive uh, third person one his teacher exists man beer drinks and here uh, we start with the adjective close without repeating the word so it's beer earth man but it's the hidden word to be so you use the verb olan olan again so beer earth man olan adam bir ediyor as you see the only difference here it's there's no e here and there's one here and when i say e i mean the turkish e or the vowel i in english third person possessive okay so that's the only difference that we do but it's important when you read okay so yeah okay how about if he hasn't for example the car which doesn't have fuel is um, in the garage so first of all let's um, split the sentence the car which doesn't have fuel now this is the adjective close the main sentence is the car is in the gar garage so I'm gonna write that the car is in the garage uh, which in Turkish is Araba garage it's the same in Turkish but in the garage so it's garajda and the second sentence is the car doesn't have fuel which in Turkish it's Araba nın Fuel is benzin. Benzin. Arabanın benzin i third person. Yok. Doesn't have. If it if it was has fuel, that would be var. Arabanın benzini var. But here it doesn't have, so arabanın benzini yok. You already know these, but I'm just you know reminding you. So arabanın benzini yok. Now when we merge them, it's pretty straightforward again. This is our main sentence. Uh, this is our main sentence. Sorry, this is the adjective. So we don't start with this one. Uh, I mean, we start with this sentence, but not with this verb word. Uh, so we start with this one. Benzine. Now, yok or var, you don't use them. Okay, you have to use the verb to be, which is olmak. Now, olmak is used with var, to be, right? And just make it negative for yok. Pretty logical, right? Not to be. So. This is to be, olmak, olmamak, not to be. Now you just delete this one 
and all my yarn, friends in all my yarn. Now I'm continuing. You just don't use this var or yok, okay? You just continue with the main sentence. Araba, garajda. Benzin olmayan araba garajda. Okay. This 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 thing is j by the way. It's not y. Okay. It's not j either. This is Turkish. So benzin olmayan araba garajda. Okay. And the same thing. Uh, for example, the man who doesn't have a teacher is Jack. And uh, I'm gonna use the other sentence, so I'm gonna pu keep pushing enter. Okay. The man who isn't a teacher is Jack. Okay, let's work on these two sentences. Again, the only difference is gonna be the possessive or not. Okay. If you have the verb to have, you're gonna use the possessive. If you have the verb, if you don't have the verb to have, you don't use the possessive. So, teacher is Örtman. I'm not gonna split the sentences anymore. You got the logic, I guess. Örtman doesn't have a teacher, so I said I just told you if you have the verb to have, you have to have the possessive. So teacher, his teacher, Örtmenim, my teacher, Örtmenin, right? Örtmenim, my teacher, Örtmenin, your teacher, Örtmenin, his teacher. Because we're talking about the man, third person. So öğretmenim doesn't have, normally it's yok. Öğretmenim yok, he doesn't have a teacher. But this is our subclause, so you, we use the verb to have, uh, to be, sorry, olmak, in negative. So olmayan, the man, Adam, Jack. Maybe with a comma here. Or not, doesn't matter. Öğretmenim olmayan Adam, Jack. And here, the man who isn't a teacher is Jack, so he isn't a teacher. Öğretmen, değil, normally, that, that's what you would say. We don't use daily either, he uses the verb to be, okay? So, the man who isn't a teacher, öğretmen olmayan adam, Jack. So again, the, the only difference in the, between these two sentences is the verb, is the uh, existence or the absence uh, of possessive. Okay, so that's how you do sentences with the verb to have in it. Now, um, let's maybe work on a few other sentences just to expand our vocabulary a little bit. Uh, because I don't want you to only focus on grammar in these lessons, I want you to all also expand your vocabulary. So, yeah, I'm going to use some uh, different words than what we used to use until 7th, 16th or 17th. Um, lessons. So, for example, um, the cities that have a high population are usually pretty crowded. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm gonna use the one column, and we don't compare things anymore. So, the cities that have a high population are usually pretty crowded. Well, wow, such a stupid sentence. I just noticed this. Uh, are usually, <laughs> let's say, are usually pretty polluted. Let's say <laughs> that's gonna make more sense. Now, the cities, city is Shehir. And uh, population is nufus. Are, are these legible? Maybe let's not use. I, okay, say here nufus. And uh, usually, çoğunlukla, çoğunlukla, usually, and pretty is baya. This is pronounced baya. Okay, baya. We don't say baya, but baya. And polluted is just kille, which is also dirty. Turkish is simple, okay, we just use one word for, you know, it's not English. Now, uh, this is our adjective close, right? So I'm going to um, do this. We're going to start with that. Actually, we might as well do that, uh, begin doing it, because when you speak, you don't, ha you can't, you don't have the time 
to you know divide the sentence like this you have to say it so you start with your adjective clause now we have a verb to have here so that's a problem okay you uh, you're gonna use possessive on this one and uh, I forgot hi hi is yüksek okay yüksek is high so a high population is yüksek bir nüfus okay a high population yüksek bir nüfus but we have the verb to have here so we're gonna need the third person possessive here which is do you remember u, i, u or u obviously you have u here so you're gonna use u um, yüksek bir nüfusu nüfusu the verb to have it's var or yok and we don't use either of them we use olmak so it's positive so olan yüksek bir nüfusu olan now we continue with this one cities şehirler <coughs> usually çoğunlukla pretty is baya and politics is kirli okay normally you would also add did here this is such an encyclopedic uh, encyclopedical sentence uh, so we use did third person but you don't have to worry about that when you speak so you say bir nüfus olan şehirler çoğunlukla baya kirli okay this is a pretty good wikipedia sentence actually <laughs> and um, so yeah that's it let's continue with another sentence or maybe I'm gonna write it in here so you can maybe compare if you do that um, okay people who have a scar generally also have a or I'm, I'm just gonna say also have a tattoo I'm gonna say actually the people here okay which is not gonna change the sentence in Turkish because we don't have the but um, anyways the people who have a scar also have a tattoo okay now people is insanlar insan is person and insanlar is people the scar is yara easy okay this is by the way um, yara easy is a noun, noun compound we didn't really study these too much but it's a noun compound normally it's yara plus is yara is a wound and is is like a trace so it's a wound trace so when you have two nouns together you use the possessive and the second one and in such cases it's also third person okay so it's yara izim my scar yara is in your scar yara izi just like this it's also his scar so just another thing to keep in mind anyway just learn this for now and we're gonna study it later so in sonar and yara is a scar or his scar already built and tattoo is um, dome now the main sentence is people have a tattoo okay let's do that first of all the people have a tattoo the verb to have in Turkish you have to use genitive and then you know so we just did that so in sanlar un peoples uh, yara izi this is normal third person pos possessive as well for this word it's the same in sanlar yara izi oh no sorry uh, people have a tattoo sorry 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 so in sanların dövme and for this you have to add si dövme si the people's people's um, tattoo exist what now which people the ones who have a scar now we have to have here as well so scar is yara izi this is or so you don't what I'm trying to say is that you don't say yara izi si okay when you have compound nouns like this where the second noun already has received the third person possessive suffix like here you don't add anything else for third person possessive so that's just one thing to keep in mind as I said we're gonna study them later maybe so yara izi now you don't use var but you use olmak so olan insanların 
dövmesi var. Okay. Again, this dır, adir is something that you would see in such a sentence. This is such a general sentence. I wanted to remove the generality by adding the here, which doesn't change much in the Turkish sentence, but it's suddenly more okay to omit the the here because we didn't study that. Anyway, so this is such a sentence where you would have a two ver to have you know two verbs of the same kind to have here and to have here. But I mean, well, it's logical again. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's at least logical, I guess. Once you let the rule, it's not. There's no exceptions. And uh, maybe one more sentence, and then we're gonna go on to the exercises that you're gonna do, and then I'm gonna explain them to you in the next lesson. And we're already in minute thirty. Wow. Mm, okay. The house that have um, oh we changed the font here. Get back to it, Germont. The house that has sorry that has um, five, four windows is a um, tree house. Or oh, let's not yeah a tree house okay. The house that has four windows is a tree house. Now this is the adjective clause, so we're going to start with this one. Okay, window is penjere. Oh, let's write the vocabulary. House is f, f. Four is dirt. Window is penjere. Tree house, tree is arch, and house is f. And tree house is a noun, noun compound. Actually, maybe in English this is spelled as one word. I don't know. Let's spell it two words. F dot F penjere arch F. Okay, arch F. This can be said, but usually we say arch F. No, arch F is fine. Arch F, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this is our adjective clause that has four windows. So window is penjere, and uh, four windows is dot penjere. Never ever say dot penjere that. Okay. Never ever say this, Angela. This is wrong in so, on so many levels. We don't use the verb. Uh, we don't use plural the plural suffix with numbers. Dirt Pangea. It's obvious that it's plural. There are four of them. Okay, so you don't have to uh, show it twice. So dirt Pangea. We have to have here. So you're gonna have to use the possessive third person because it's of the house. Dirt Pangea is and has becomes Olmax so Olan. And then you continue. Ev, bir archef. Okay. I use the comma here. So usually we use the we use a comma after the subject to um, help the reader better parse the sentence. Okay. Usually we do that. Not always, but usually. And sometimes we use a semicolon as well, but not in this case. Maybe I can teach you the punctuation rules much later. They're not so important at this point. So dirt penjet is all an F P H F. Okay. So yeah, that's about it. Now we're gonna uh, go on to alıştırmalar exercises. Exercises? No, with S. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. So three sentences again. Three sentences. The first one. Um, Okay, the first sentence is actually before we get back to exercises, I want you to I want to teach something else. Maybe we can do a sentence like the man uh, oh, I'm gonna confuse you too much here. Okay. Never mind. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just get to Alistair Muller and then continue in the next lesson. Alistair Muller exercises. So the first one, um, the man who is, uh, who has a who 
who has a watch, yeah, who has a watch, is a police officer. Now the man is Adam, and watch is Kol Sati, and uh, this is actually arm clock. So two two nouns. Second one has received a third person possessive suffix. So, so be careful. You don't say Kol Sati. See, okay, this is already third person. So Kol Sati. Such uh, such words are have both meanings. Kol Sati means watch or his her its watch. Okay. So that's one thing to keep in mind in this sentence. Police officer is police or police member. Okay, you can leave out this member part. Police in Turkish is just one man. But I'm gonna give you the proper word, proper name for it police member, police officer. Second exercise, uh, second sentence is mm, the book that has. Okay, the book that has um, a thousand pages or two thousand, two thousand pages um, is probably a history book. Okay, so book is kitab, and uh, two thousand is like this. <laughs> Couldn't even type it, damn it. Anyway, Ikibin. Uh, page is Saifa. Probably is Buk Ola Sulukla Ola Sulukla. Probably. History is Tarih. And book is Kitab. So it's Tarih Kitabu, third person. Two nouns. So Tarih Kitabu. Okay. And the third one. Hmm. Okay, so third one is my friend who has a rich wife or girlfriend he is pretty poor. <laughs> so friend is Alkalash. And the rich is Zengin. Girlfriend is Kazakalash. Um, pretty is Baya. And poor is Fakir. Okay. Fakir. So these are your exercises. The man who has a watch is a police officer. The book that has 2,000 pages is probably a history book. My friend who has a rich girlfriend is pretty poor. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, good luck with them. And I'm gonna give you the answers in the following video, and then and after that we're gonna continue with this topic. So until we meet again in the next video, uh, take care of yourselves and study Turkish. And uh, yeah, good luck.